Hello everyone and welcome to lecture four of algebraic topology. Today we are going to start the algebraic part of the class. So we are going to introduce the first algebraic invariant of a topological space. This space is, uh, this algebraic object is called the fundamental group and what it does is associates to a topological space a group formed by all of the loops on that space. So a group needs to have some product. What's the product here? If I have two loops based at the same point, I do one loop and then I do the other loop. And as a whole, that's a path that starts and ends at the same point. So that's going to be our multiplication. And after a little more care, we'll prove that this is honestly a group. That is that it has identities and inverses. So let's get to it. We're going to start by talking about paths in a space. So uh, here's a definition. A path in a space X is a map F from the unit interval into X just a continuous map. Uh, so this should line up intuitively. Here's x, and the image here is f of i. So a space is path connected if any two points are joined by a path. So for example, Rn is path connected since any two points are joined in particular by a line. If you parametrize this line, you get the, uh, the map from I into the space that occurs in the definition. How about a space that's not path connected? Uh, how about 0, 1, union 2, 3, given the subspace topology of R, is not path connected? And this follows from the intermediate value theorem. So the next thing I want to get to is a notion of homotopy of paths. This is essentially the same thing as a homotopy of maps. But if you think about it, that, that definition is not really sufficient because if you ever map a contractible space, such as the interval, into another space, it's always null homotopic by just shrinking the image. So we want to make sure we can't shrink the image. And to do that, we insist that the endpoints are fixed throughout the homotopy. So here's a definition. A homotopy of paths in X is a family of paths. So FT from the interval into X so that, uh, like I mentioned, we want the endpoints to be fixed. FT of 0 is always equal to X naught and ft of 1 is always equal to x1 for some fixed x0 and x1 in x. Second of all, 
as usual, we want everything to be happening continuously. So the associated map F, capital F, from the interval across the interval into X, defined by capital F of S T is F T of S is continuous. What does the picture look like? Here's my point x0 that's going to be fixed throughout the homotopy. Here's my point x1 that's going to be fixed throughout the homotopy. And here's like f0, f1 fourth, f1 half, and let's just jump over to F1. So this path swings around, but there's like stakes at each point on the two ends. So you can move the rope in between there, but the ends don't move. Okay. Here are some examples. Let's suppose D in Rn is some convex domain. Then any two paths, let's just call them uh, F0 and F1 with the same endpoints are homotopic. In fact, I'll write down the homotopy. It looks like F T of S is T times F1 of S minus 1 minus T plus 1 minus T of F0 of S. Uh, so at T is equal to 0, this is F0 of S. And at T is equal to 1, this is F1 of S. Think about why the endpoints are fixed. And since I insisted that this space is a convex domain, any linear combination of uh, points inside of this domain remains inside of the domain. So this is actually completely within the space. Now, non-examples are harder to come by. And in fact, the entirety of next class is essentially going to boil down to giving a non-example of a homotopy of paths. But let me just give you a pictorial example of what one of these will look like. So a non-example is, uh, I'll draw it. Here are two points, x0 and x1 inside of this annulus. Here is one path between them. Here is another path between them. Let's give them names, F and G. And F is not homotopic to G. And we'll learn what this means later, but I'll just write it down. It's because the fundamental group of S1 is non-trivial. So the space of paths in a topological space actually has an algebraic structure underlying it. Granted, the starting point and the end point are the same. So given paths, f and g with f of 1 being equal to g of 0, there is a product path. f times g given by, so f times g is broken up piecewise. And what I do is first I start out by doing f twice as fast for s between 0 and 1 half. And the next thing I do is 
do g twice as fast. So to make sure it starts in the right place, I do g of 2s minus 1 for s between 1 half and 1. Uh, and this looks exactly like what you would think. Here is f, here is g, and f times g, well, imagine that green line was right on top of everything. This thing is f times g. We want it to be a map of the unit interval. That's why we speed things up. But speed is not a topological property, so we're not worried about things going faster or going slower. That's just an object of, of like the parameterization, which we don't really care about. So it turns out that this product respects homotopy classes. So what do I mean by that? Here's a lemma. If F0 is homotopic to F1 and G0 is homotopic to G1, then F0 times G0 is homotopic to F1 times G1. And I'll just write down this homotopy explicitly to give you the proof. Let's let HT of S be equal to, so this is the, the big homotopy between the pro product paths. It's FT of S for S between zero and a half. And it's a GT of S for S between one half and one. Uh, essentially, it just does, it does the homotopy of F on zero to one half, and it does the homotopy of G between one half and one. So if F is the equivalence class of all paths homotopic to F, and G is the equivalence class of all paths homotopic to G, then the class of f times g is well-defined. It's just the class of all paths homotopic to f times g. Okay, so like I mentioned, the fundamental group is a group based on loops. So what is a loop? It's just a path that ends at the same point that it starts. Let's write that down as a definition. So a loop is a path f from the interval to x so that f of 0 is equal to f of 1. Note, since the interval mod the relation 0 is related to 1 is homeomorphic to S1, this is the same thing as a loop, as a map from S1 into X. Okay. So here is the definition of the fundamental group. Before I actually call it a group, let me just call it a set. The set Okay, actually a group, but we have to prove that, of course. 
of all homotopy classes f of loops f from i to x at the base point x naught that means f of 0 equals f of 1 is equal to x naught it's called the fundamental group of x and is denoted pi 1 of x at the point x naught. So our first order of business is to show that this set is actually a group. And to do this, we're going to need to understand loops moving at different speeds. This, this is just an annoying artifact of how we needed to define our product. Uh, so let's take care of that. Let f from i to x be a path. And let phi from the interval to the interval be a continuous map with phi of 0 equals 0 and phi of 1 is equal to 1. then the loop, or more generally the path, f composed with phi is called a reparameterization. So phi is just some map from the interval to the interval. It can, you can visualize this as the graph. It goes between 0, 1, and 0, 1. And the important bit is that it starts at 0 and it ends at 1. And if you imagine a graph like this, here's 1, here's 1. And I also, this is the identity reparameterization, f of s is equal to s. So here's phi, and here is uh, the identity map. You can imagine pulling the red stuff tight right onto the blue stuff by a homotopy. And what that tells you is that reparameterizations are all homotopic to the identity map. So that's the content of this next proposition. It says that if f from i to x is a path, and f composed with phi is a reparameterization, Then f composed with phi, okay, let's make sure the target and domain are right in your mind. Phi goes from i to i, f goes from i to x, so f composed with phi is a path from i to x. And this path is actually just homotopic to f. The proof is, uh, well, since i is convex, there exists a homotopy phi t from 
phi to the identity map given by phi t. This is our usual just linear homotopy. 1 minus t of phi of s plus t times s. At 0, this is exactly phi of s. And at 1, this is phi of s is equal to s, aka the identity map. And again, this, this map is what I was talking about, just pulling phi tall. OK, so f composed with phi of t is a homotopy between uh, f composed with phi, that's at t is equal to 0, and f composed with the identity, aka just f itself. So all reparameterizations are homotopic to the uh, original map. And that's really the only piece of technology we need to prove the main theorem of today's class, which is that pi 1 of x together with the base point x0 is a group. So this is a set. I need to tell you the operation, and it's under the operation of the dot, which is the product path. So let's prove this. So let me just remind you that uh, we need identity inverses and associativity. So let's start with uh, identity. So I claim that the constant path, which I'll call E from I to X, given by E of S is just always equal to X naught is an identity under this uh, path composition operation. So why is that? Well, uh, if f from i to x is a loop, what does f times e look like? Well, if you go back up to the definition, it's f of 2t first for s between 0 and a half. And then it's just x naught for uh, 1 half to 1. So it turns out that this is just a reparameterization of f. under uh, phi, which looks like two t for, or let's call this s, two s for s between zero and a half. And then it's just one for s between 1 half and 1. So let's think about this. Phi just makes the integral, interval go twice as fast and then just hang out at the top. But that's exactly what f times e is doing. f's going twice as fast and then it's just hanging out at the top there. So since all reparameterizations are homotopic, f times e, well, this is f composed with this phi here. 
And by the previous lemma, this is homotopic to F. So F times E is F. So F is a right, uh, E is a right identity under the product path. And similarly, you can do the same thing and you'll learn that E times F is also homotopic to F. Great, so we found our identity. Now what we need are inverses, that is something to multiply my loop by to get back to the identity. So let f from i to x be a loop and let f bar from i to x be a loop defined by f bar of s is f of 1 minus s. So what this does is this just runs f in reverse. And I claim that f times f bar is homotopic to f bar times f and these are both homotopic to the identity I found before, which is that constant path, which just hangs out right at x naught. Okay, so uh, let me construct this homotopy for you. So let uh, ft, this is not the homotopy, it's just a another path, be given by f on the interval 0 to 1 minus t and then f of 1 minus t on 1 minus t to 1. Okay, so this just follows f up to 1 minus t and then just stays stationary. And let g of t be equal to ft bar. So this is just the inverse path. It hangs out at f of 1 minus t for a while and then come, like follows f back to 0. And now I will construct this homotopy. Let h of t be equal to ft times gt. So then h of 1, well, this map is f on 0 to 0, and then it just stays there for a while. And then we do the inverse path. In other words, this is just completely stationary, is the identity map. And h of 0 is f0 posed with g0. So this follows f from 0 to 1 and then does the inverse path. In other words, this is f times the inverse to f, so f bar. This is a homotopy from f times f bar to the identity map. I'm going to draw a picture here so that we know what this thing is. So here's a loop f. And f times f bar, uh, I'll just draw the picture like this. It's f, and then it just follows f backwards. Okay, now f like one half times g one half looks like follow the loop halfway, hang out for a little bit, and then come back. And then 
similarly, f one fourth times g one fourth. You only go a little bit of the way out, and then you come back. And this is a continuous family. So the homotopy is go all the way out, come back. That's f f bar. Go almost all the way out, come back, and keep retracting backwards until you just go out a little bit and come back. And then at the very end, you just stay stationary the whole time. This is a continuous family of deformations, f f bar to the identity. Similarly, f bar times f is also homotopic to the identity. Same thing, except I'm going to use gt times ft there. So f bar is f inverse. And the final thing I need to check is associativity of this multiplication. So what do I need to show? I need to show that if I do the product path of f and g, and then I take that path, and I take its product path with h, this is the same thing as f times g times h. So what is f times g times h? Well, it starts off with f times g. So how does f times g compare to f and g? Well, let's just do f twice as fast and then do g twice as fast. And then I multiply it by h. So I need to do f times g twice as fast and then do h. But f has already gone twice as fast. And therefore, I'm really doing f four times as fast. So let's do f four times as fast. And then do g four times as fast. And then we do h two times as fast. Let's compare this to f times g times h. Well, this is do f twice as fast, do h four times as fast, oops, sorry, do g first four times as fast, and then do h four times as fast. What is this? These are all just reparameterizations of the same path. If you're just moving along different speeds, but you're tracing out all of the same stuff, that is exactly what a reparameterization is trying to capture. So these are reparameterizations of the same path. And so they're homotopic. And there we have it, this thing is a group. So showing that this group is non-trivial, again, is very difficult. But showing that it's trivial can be easy in some cases. I claim that the fundamental group of Rn is trivial. Why? Well, let Ct from R to R be the contraction x goes to t times x. So we've seen before, Rn deformation retracts onto a point. And this retraction is just everybody follows the line right down to the origin. Now let 
f from i to rn be a loop based at zero. What I'm going to do is construct a homotopy of this loop onto the trivial path. And it's given by CT composed with F. So I map the loop into the space. And now the space is sitting there, but I'm going to find the image of that loop under this contraction. And so this loop will shrink down and shrink down until at the very end, all of the points, I mean, everything in Rn is mapped to zero. So in particular, all of the points in this loop are mapped onto zero. So this is a homotopy of F onto the trivial path, which just stays at zero. So there's no loops of interest in Rn. More generally, if C is any contractible space which deformation retracts onto x naught, then the fundamental group of this contractible space based at x naught is the trivial group. So everything we've defined so far, this fundamental group, is dependent on this base point. But we don't really care necessarily about spaces together with a base point. We care about spaces. So a natural question is, how much does pi 1 of x, x naught, depend on the choice of base point x naught? Turns out, not that much. So let f be a loop based at x1 and let h be a path from x0 to x1. So let me just draw the picture here. This is h and here is f. Now you could probably see from this picture how to get a loop based at x naught. What I do is I follow h out to x1, I go around the loop that already exists, and then I follow h backwards to x naught. Remember this path has to start and end at x naught. So we get a loop based at x naught given by, uh, first I do h, and then I do f, and then I do h bar. So we define the change of base point map beta h to be so it takes in a loop and it gives out a loop so from pi 1 of x, x naught to pi 1 of x at x1, where a loop f is sent to h times f times h bar. And here is the proposition.
the map beta h is an isomorphism. So if you have two points connected by some path, the fundamental groups given by loops based at those points are isomorphic. Let's prove it. First of all, I need to show you that beta h is a homomorphism. Beta h is a homomorphism. Since, okay, it needs to send a product of loops to a product of loops. So what is beta h of f times g? Well, it's the homotopy class of h times f times g times h bar. Okay, this isn't exactly what beta h of f times beta h of g is, but let's introduce something here. In the middle, I can always introduce a path and its inverse, right? We've shown before that if you take a path and then do its inverse, it's homotopic to doing nothing at all. And then I multiply by g, then I multiply by h bar. And now, oh, let's do h bar first and then h. Uh, so now I see two loops here multiplied together and the multiplication is well-defined on homotopy classes so I can break this up into H times F times H bar times H times G times H bar. And this is exactly the image under beta H of F times the image under beta h of g. Okay, so this is a homomorphism. Moreover, beta h has an inverse. Since, what, if, what happens if I do beta h composed with beta h bar of f. So beta h is a map from pi 1 uh, based at x0 to pi 1 based at x1. Beta h bar is a map going the other way. So these are going between the right places. And what I get is essentially uh, okay, f and then I did beta h bar and then I do beta h, and so the h and h bars cancel out, and I get back my class f. So it's a homomorphism with an inverse. It's an isomorphism. So there's a little bit of a fine point here, which is that not all of the spaces that exist topologically are path connected. Most of them that we look at and most of them that come up in applications are path connected. But the upshot is that if X is path connected, pi 1 of x, x0 is independent as a group of x0. So we can just write pi 1 of x. So if we're just interested in the group part of pi 1 and our space is path connected, we are honestly getting something that only depends on the underlying space which is great for distinguishing spaces. So another great thing about the fundamental group is that it doesn't just 
give you an invariant of spaces, it also tells you something about maps between spaces. The rough idea is that if I have a loop in a space X, and I have a map between X and Y, then I can push that loop over to Y by the map. And so I get a map from the fundamental group of X to the fundamental group of Y. So let's just write that down. First of all, these are called induced homomorphisms. And let's just start with the definition. If X is a space and X naught is a point in X, we call X, X naught a pointed space. If X, X naught and Y, Y naught are two pointed spaces, we call phi from x, x naught to y, y naught a pointed map if phi of x naught is equal to y naught. And when I write this, phi goes from x, x naught to y, y naught, this, this will imply it is a pointed map. Just some notation. Now, if f from i to x is a loop based at x naught, and phi from x, x naught to y, y naught is a pointed map. Then we get a loop based at y naught by uh, just first doing the map f and then composing it with phi. So I won't prove this, but this respects homotopies of paths. Just a very easy construction where you just compose the homotopy with the map phi. So we get a well-defined map phi star from pi 1 of x based at x naught to pi 1 of y based at y naught where homotopy class of f gets sent to the homotopy class of phi composed with f. Here's a nice property. That's also very easy to check. If I look at phi of f times g, this is homotopic to phi of f times phi of g. So phi star is actually a homomorphism. Uh, Here's some more properties. First of all, if phi from x, x naught to x, x naught is the identity map, uh, 
then Feastar is also the identity map on pi 1 of x based at x0. So the identity map goes to the identity map, and you can easily check that from the definition. I don't change the homotopy class of the loop, so it just stays where it is. And finally, uh, phi is associative. Uh, so that means that if phi from x to x0, x x0 to y, y0, and c is a map from y, y0 to z, z0, I can ask what is the induced map phi composed with c star this goes from pi 1 of x x naught to pi 1 of z z naught oh i wrote my maps the wrong way this is c composed with phi of course uh, this is equal to C star composed with phi star. So I didn't choose these properties arbitrarily. These two properties make pi 1 of x into what's called a functor. And we'll talk more about functors when we get into our chapter about homological algebra. But let me just say that these are the start of the field of math called category theory. It was born out of algebraic topology when they noticed things like pi 1 of x satisfied certain properties. Uh, the last thing I want to do is give you an equivalence relation which does not change the fundamental group of a space. So here's the definition. Let x, x naught and why, why not, be pointed spaces we say uh, x, x naught and y, y naught are pointed homotopy equivalent If there exists a phi respecting the base points and a psi also respecting base points going the other way, so that phi composed with C and the other way around, C composed with phi, are homotopic to the identity map by a map, or by a homotopy rather, fixing x naught or y naught at all times. So it's exactly the same thing as homotopy equivalence, except we're going to make sure that throughout this homotopy, our base point stays fixed. And here is a proposition. If x, x naught and y, y naught are pointed homotopy equivalent, Then, pi 1 of x, x0 is isomorphic to pi 1 of y, y0. And the proof is what you would expect it to be. We're just going to compose loops with 
the homotopy equivalence. So proof, let f from i to x be a loop and let phi and c be inverse homotopy equivalences. So this one goes from x to y respecting base points and this one goes from y to x respecting base points. So, uh, if I take C composed with phi composed with F, this is a map from I to X, and since everything respects base points, this is a loop in X based at X0. Now, let C composed with phi of t be the uh, base point fixing homotopy to the identity. So C composed with phi of zero is C composed with phi and C composed with phi at 1 is the identity map on X. Then if I look at C composed with phi T composed with F, this now is a homotopy from C composed with phi of f and f itself, because at the end of this homotopy, I'm back at the identity map. Now, since C composed with phi star is again C star composed with phi star, and what I just showed is that they are inverses. If I put f into this thing, I get f back. phi star and c star are actually isomorphisms. And as a final remark, I'll note you can drop the condition on base points. So any homotopy equivalence will work, but it's just a little more work. And in the future, you can always cite that homotopy equivalences induce isomorphisms on the fundamental group. So that's going to do it for today. So what we've done is set up all of this machinery for pi 1 of x and showed some properties that it has. But we haven't produced a single example of a non-trivial fundamental group. That is going to be completely the content of next lecture. I'll see you next time.